A cordial greeting. Today is Thursday, June 20, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. This video will be quite extensive, as I will be discussing several areas of interest in the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. First, I will talk about the possible development of another tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico waters during this weekend, which promises to bring substantial rainfall over Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and eventually the states of Tamaulipas, Coahuila, San Luis Potosi, and Nuevo León. These areas have already experienced significant rainfall in recent days and have reported flooding. This rainfall event is expected to continue at least until the beginning of next week, potentially causing additional flooding. On the other hand, I will be discussing Invest 92, which is approaching the states of Georgia and Florida, and is expected to arrive during the afternoon hours of Friday. It is possible that it could become a tropical depression before reaching the United States, so in the video, I will talk about the potential effects that can be felt across these regions. In the final part of the video, I would like to talk about a long-term projection where models are beginning to show the possibility of another cyclone developing towards the end of July. We will be closely monitoring several strong tropical waves that will be emerging from Africa. Although it is not typical to see development in this area in June, I will discuss several factors that could lead to the possible development of strong tropical waves that we will need to monitor as they approach the Caribbean or reach the Western Caribbean Sea. Before providing more details about all these areas, I wanted to mention that Tropical Storm Alberto is currently over central Mexico and is expected to dissipate in the coming hours due to the central country's mountains. These are the remnants of what was Tropical Storm Alberto, which made landfall in Tamaulipas this morning and has been bringing significant rainfall across central, northern, and northeastern Mexico, which is certainly beneficial for the region. Some flooding has also been reported in southern Texas, especially due to storm surges. Although Tropical Storm Alberto was a relatively weak system in terms of maximum sustained winds, it caused significant damage across Central America, particularly in El Salvador, Guatemala, and the Yucatan Peninsula. However, for our friends in Central, Northern, and Northeastern Mexico, the rainfall has been quite beneficial, providing relief from the drought affecting the region. Now, let's talk about a broad circulation that has redeveloped over northern Central America, causing new showers and flooding across the region. A low-pressure area has developed just north of Honduras and is heading towards the Gulf of Mexico, crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula. This low pressure is being monitored by the National Hurricane Center, which, as of 2 p.m., maintains a 50% probability of developing into a tropical depression in the southern Gulf of Mexico waters, similar to what we saw with Tropical Storm Alberto. If we zoom in a bit on the visible satellite image, we can see that the low pressure is located in this area, and the southwest wind flow continues to impact the southern region of Guatemala, El Salvador, and parts of western Nicaragua, as well as southern Honduras. Here, heavy showers have been recorded, especially in El Salvador where new flooding has been reported. Additionally, notice that there is another flow moving from the southeast over the Yucatan Peninsula, where some heavy showers are also being reported. These will continue for the next two to three days. Eventually, this low-pressure area will move towards the Bay of Campeche, which, as you may know, due to the geography of the area, sometimes makes it quite easy for tropical cyclones to form. It is important for our friends in Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Belize to be vigilant about possible flooding over the next 72 hours. Also, our friends in Tamaulipas and Veracruz should be very attentive to the possibility of another cyclone moving over the region. Let's now look at some of the projections from global models. We'll start with the GFS model, which during the morning or afternoon hours of Saturday, develops a tropical depression in the Bay of Campeche waters, eventually reaching Tamaulipas during the night hours of Sunday or early Monday morning. However, the model keeps it quite weak, perhaps as a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. We also have the projection from the European model, which agrees that a tropical depression could develop east of Veracruz on Saturday morning, eventually moving over Tamaulipas during the night hours of Sunday or early Monday morning. This model also shows a very weak system, possibly a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. Other models agree with this projection. For example, the German model shows a tropical depression or weak tropical storm arriving in the early morning hours of Monday in Tamaulipas. The UK model also shows the development of a tropical depression east of Tamaulipas and Veracruz during the morning hours of Sunday. This means that the probability of cyclonic development in the area will likely continue to increase over the coming days, and it is possible that we will see the development of the second cyclone of the Atlantic hurricane season. Now let's talk about the effects this disturbance could have across Central America and Mexico. We'll start by looking at the total rainfall projections expected over the next 48 hours, from today, Thursday, until early Saturday morning in the Central American region. You can see that a lot of rain is expected over the next 24 hours, affecting parts of southern Honduras, El Salvador, and western Nicaragua, where between 125 to 200 millimeters of accumulated rainfall could fall. 
Flooding issues will likely continue in this region at least until Saturday. By Sunday, weather conditions may improve slightly. Also, note that the bands moving over the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize can leave rainfall accumulations between 100 to 125 mm over the next 48 hours. This area has also experienced a lot of rain in recent days, so new floods could be reported. If we move to the region of Tamaulipas and Veracruz, an extended period of rain is expected to begin during the night hours of Saturday and extend until Monday. Models project that in sectors of Nuevo León, Tamaulipas, Veracruz, and San Luis Potosí between 200 to 300 mm of rain could fall, especially during the weekend and the beginning of next week. With the recent passage of Tropical Storm Alberto over the region, the soils are very saturated, so these floods could be significant. Exercise caution in this area of eastern Mexico. Now let's move on to the region east of Florida and Georgia, where we have a well-defined low-pressure system that was designated as Invest 92 today. We have seen that it has developed a very defined surface-level circulation, and also has some convective areas developing to the north and northwest of the circulation. Judging by the visible satellite image, this disturbance might be close to becoming a tropical depression, as it continues its west-northwest trajectory. In fact, at this hour, at 2.30 in the afternoon, a Hurricane Hunter aircraft is investigating the area to see if a tropical depression has developed. In the infrared satellite image, you can see that the thunderstorm area remains quite active, with thunderstorms constantly developing near the center of circulation. This is why the probability of it forming into a tropical depression appears to be increasing this afternoon. As of 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center maintained a 40% probability of cyclonic development before reaching Florida or Georgia during the night hours of tomorrow, Friday. Here you can see the trajectories of specialized models. Generally, a movement towards the west-northwest until it reaches northern Florida or the coast of Georgia during the night hours of Friday. At least the good news is that Invest 92 is surrounded by a lot of dry air, which is preventing it from strengthening rapidly. All the intensity specialized models keep it as a low pressure or tropical depression until it reaches Florida or Georgia. At least that is good news, since we do not expect any surprise of a rapidly strengthening cyclone before reaching the United States. For the moment, what is anticipated is some rain affecting northern Florida and the coast of Georgia. For now, models project that between 1 to 2 inches of rain could fall. Also, this low pressure could be accompanied by some tropical depression strength wind gusts. We are talking about sustained winds between 25 to 30 miles per hour, which should not cause inconveniences across this region. Nevertheless, I will be closely monitoring what the Hurricane Hunter aircraft finds, and will keep you informed of any significant changes in this forecast. Now, I would like to talk about what we can expect in the Atlantic, especially during the last week of June. But first, I want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of these videos. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red button that says subscribe, and then click the bell to receive notifications when I post new videos. For now, the Atlantic Ocean remains quite active, particularly in the Western Caribbean Sea, the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and towards the southeastern United States, where cyclonic development is sometimes observed according to climatology. However, typically during June and July, the tropical Atlantic region remains quite calm because the conditions are not yet favorable for the formation of tropical cyclones. One of the main reasons is that Saharan dust is a major impediment for tropical waves to find favorable conditions for development. Even so, in recent weeks, we have seen several strong tropical waves continuing to emerge from Africa, which could indicate that the Cape Verde season might start a bit earlier than anticipated. Additionally, we expect that in the next two weeks, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation MJO, will be moving over the African continent and the Indian Ocean. This is related to the pulse that has been crossing over the Atlantic and is now located in this area. But notice that models project it will remain stationary over the region for at least the next two weeks. It is precisely in this phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation that conditions can become more favorable for cyclonic development in the tropical Atlantic. If it weren't for the fact that we are in June, we would probably have several systems to monitor in the coming days. I mention this because the main area of cyclonic development between the Caribbean and Africa is experiencing record-breaking temperatures, hotter for this time of year than we have on record. Looking ahead and viewing projections for the end of June and the beginning of July, notice that the ensemble members of the GFS model indicate the possibility of developing some low-pressure systems near Central America. Here, we could again see the development of a tropical cyclone by the end of June or the beginning of July. And even more interesting, some members start to show low-pressure systems in the tropical Atlantic and towards the southeast of the Lesser Antilles 
possibly related to several strong tropical waves moving through the region. The interesting thing is that the ensemble members of the European model also show some low-pressure systems towards the east and southeast of the Caribbean, as well as low-pressure systems near Central America. And although there is no reason to worry at the moment since this is a long-term forecast, and typically June is a quiet month in this area, it is something we will eventually monitor because, historically, during the first 10 days of July, we have seen the development of some cyclones towards the east and southeast of the Lesser Antilles. I am not saying that this year we will have development as early as the end of June, but I am seeing some indications that the Cape Verde season could start a little earlier than anticipated. So, stay calm in the Eastern Caribbean, we are not going to worry for now. We will be observing these waves at the end of June. But our main focus will be on the region of Mexico and Central America to see what cyclonic development might occur in this area. Also, stay alert for Invest 92 which is approaching Georgia and Florida. Well, with this, I say goodbye, but not without first inviting you to join my channel as sponsors. If you are interested, go to the bottom of the video, click the blue button that says join, and see the different sponsorship plans where, with a small monthly contribution, you can help my project and receive some additional benefits. Well, with this, I say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video.